Here's lesson six. We're going to take this lesson to use the equations that we derived in the past lesson. We've solved a few simple problems as they relate to displacement, velocity, and acceleration. But we're going to add in now vectors, we get new equations, we have variables. <coughs> so let's take a look at six very typical, straightforward questions. And we'll go from there. So here's example one. A skateboarder goes down a hill at 4 meters per second and accelerates at 2 meters per second squared. What is their velocity 5 seconds later? So what's given in this problem? Well, what's given is that we know V1 because we start going down a hill at 4 meters per second. We know the acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. And we're asked to find the velocity five seconds later. So we know that the time that we're looking at is five seconds. So our unknown then that we're being asked to find is V2. And V2 is equal to whatever, and we're going to find out what it is. So let's make a wise choice of equation. Which of our five has V1, A, T, and V2? And that will be equation one. <coughs> So here it is. Now it's written in a different way, but it doesn't matter. We can rearrange it to solve for whatever we need. And if we substitute the numbers in, we know that the acceleration is equal to 2. V2 is our unknown. V1 is equal to 4. And T is equal to 5. And so we can now substitute, rearrange, as you'll see here, and say, oh, V2 is equal to 14 meters per second. So what we know then is we know that the skater, after 5 seconds, has gone from 4 meters per second to 14 meters per second. That's not too bad. Let's take a look at example 2. A Toyota Tundra picks up pickup truck travels at 10 meters per second north. It accelerates for 4 meters per second squared north, so in the same direction, and it does so for 8 seconds. During this 8 seconds, what's the truck's displacement? So again, let's look at what we're given. We're given V1, because we know it's traveling initially at 10 meters per second north. We know what its acceleration is, and we know how long it does it. We're not being asked to find velocity in this case, but we're being asked to find its displacement after these 8 seconds. So we've got V1, A, T, and D. And we say, okay, Equation 3 is a great candidate to help us solve this. So here's equation 3 and we can make a substitution. V1 is 10, time is 8. Acceleration is 4. And when we substitute these things in and we start calculating, <coughs> we find the displacement of the truck is 208 meters. And it's in the north direction. The reason we know it's in the north direction is because north is positive, and so we've used a value of plus 10 for velocity 1, and we've used a vo uh, an acceleration of plus 4 for acceleration. And so because the answer that we get is plus, we can say, okay, well, it's 208 meters north. So let's look at a third example. This one's a little bit more tricky. A ball rolls up a hill at 4 meters per second. Five seconds later, it rolls down the hill at 6 meters per second. What's its displacement after five seconds? So initially, we've got this ball rolling up a hill. Okay? And at some point up the hill, obviously, it comes to a stop, and then it starts to roll back down because five seconds later it's rolling down the hill at six meters per second. So using our standard sign convention, this problem would be really tricky. But if we tilt our sign convention to be in the positive, to be up the hill, then what we can say is, oh, this is just a one-dimensional problem again. 
So we can say, okay, let's go forward then, as if this problem, as if this ball was rolling back and forth along a straight surface. So we know that velocity one is four meters per second up the hill. <coughs> which is plus four meters per second, because we're saying that rolling up the hill is plus. Velocity two is six meters per second, and that's down the hill. And that would be minus six meters per second, because if up is positive, then negative is going to be down the hill. Our time is five seconds, and we're being asked to find displacement. So we'll use equation two, because it's got displacement v1, v2, and time. And so if we substitute in our numbers, being very careful with the signs, we calculate a displacement of negative five meters. And because we've been careful with our signs, negative five meters tells us something very important. It tells us that the displacement after five seconds is five meters below the point where it started from. And that's important to note. It's five meters down the hill from where it started. And that's good because all of our signs we've used very carefully. And so the math actually tells us where the ball is. So the ball's displacement after five seconds is five meters down the hill. A boy spits a watermelon seed down from a 40 meter balcony at two meters per second. Assuming that there's no air resistance, how fast is the seed going after three seconds? Well, we know that there's this thing called gravity and that gravity pulls everything down, right? Or at least we think it does. Everything's accelerating towards the earth and it accelerates at the earth at a blistering pace of 9.8 meters per second squared. So what that means then, if we take our sign convention to be up and we put the origin at the top of this balcony, so where the motion starts, that's where we're going to put zero. That means the ground is below us, so down 40 meters. So the ground actually has a coordinate of negative 40 meters. So what do we know? We know that the velocity is 2.0 meters per second and we're spitting the seed downwards, so it's in the downwards direction. We know that acceleration is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared in the downwards direction. And we know that the time is 3 seconds. And we're being asked to solve for the speed after those 3 seconds, v2. So we got v1, v2, a, and t. We'll use equation 1. And what we'll say is negative 2, which is v1, plus negative 9.8, which is acceleration, times 3. And of course, as you would have guessed, the acceleration will be, an, or sorry, the velocity, the second velocity will be a negative number in the downwards direction. So basically, if you spit it down with some velocity, after three seconds, it's going to be going faster in the downwards direction. So V2 is equal to 31 meters per second in the down direction. Example 5. Shandy drops a penny from rest off of the roof of KCI. If there's no resistance from the air, how far is the penny traveled after 2.5 seconds? Now, this is a very similar type of question. However, we're only given one number, and that can be alarming to many students. So we know time, we know it's 2.5 seconds, but what else do we know? If you drop something from rest, that's a clue. That gives us a, another number that's not explicitly written, but that it is implied. And that's that V1, if we drop it from rest, is equal to zero. Because it's falling under the influence of gravity, we also can assume that acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. And we want to know how far the pennies traveled. 
So with all these three things, why don't we use our equation 3 and substitute our values. As you would have guessed, the displacement is negative, so because it's fallen, it's gone down almost 31 meters. And so we can say, after 2.5 seconds, the penny has fallen 31 meters. Final example for today. A motorcycle travels at 45 meters per second west through a school zone. How fast will it be going if the driver hits the brakes and decelerates at 5 meters per second squared for 3 seconds? We need to ask ourselves what that word decelerates means. Because we know it's an acceleration. We know we're talking about acceleration. But we need to know the direction of that acceleration because that direction is going to tell us the sign to use, whether it's positive or negative. So we know that V1 is 45 meters per second west. And if we're using our normal sign convention, west is negative. So V1 is negative 45 meters per second. What's the acceleration? If we're traveling west and we're slowing down, we're, we're decelerating in the west direction. But what that means is we're actually accelerating in the east direction. We're accelerating opposite to what we're traveling. And so our acceleration is negative 5 meters per second west. But because west is negative, we can say plus 5 meters per second. And that is a tricky, tricky thing to get through your brain. Because a deceleration is an opposite, is a negative acceleration. And so we have to pick our directions very, very carefully. We know that the time is 3 seconds. We want to know what V2 is. So when we do this, of course, after 3 seconds, if he's decelerating, in the end, we should find a slower speed. Should we not? We certainly should. We should have a slower speed in the west direction if we've done things right. If we haven't done things right, we'll end up with something faster, or something ridiculous. So let's take a look. Here's V2 equals V1 plus AT. This is equation 1. Substitute in our values. Negative 45 plus 5 times 3. And we end up with negative 30 meters per second. Now again, the math has done the work for us. Negative 30 means 30 meters per second in the west direction. And so now we can go back and check. Oh yeah, we have done things right. The motorcycle has slowed from 45 meters per second west to 30 meters per second west. And so in the end, we can say it's going 30 meters per second. So those are six very simple examples. Um, one of the things that I always do with my classes is that I load them up on problem solving. And I give them tons and tons of problems to solve. And I would recommend that if you're in my class and you're watching this, you definitely do the homework. And if you're not in my class and you're watching this, you try tons of different examples from whatever textbook you're using.